Both dogs you're gonna see in this video have just arrived. She's been here for a few more, this is Toto, she's been here for a few more days than Gus, so she's functioning a little bit better. Both of them have similar issues in that a leash wasn't used enough. This dog in particular was on a farm, so there was a lot of time that the dog just could run around and it wasn't picking up stuff because a leash wasn't being used and stuff was being trained in that was negative with the Labrador that you'll see in a second too. So if you have a puppy, the leash stays on the dog no matter what the circumstances is until it's functioning properly. So by the time that we get this dog e-collar conditioned, remember, you know, and it can be off leash and function, I'm looking at about 45 days, maybe a little bit less. But anytime the dog is out of the crate from this point on to the point where it starts dragging the leash because it's gonna be a transitional period into off leash, the leash is on the dog. Then it drags the leash. Don't be unrealistic and don't think you're helping your dog by letting it roam around your house off of a leash. You use the crate. Use the crate. Your dog, if you influence it like this at an early age, you're just gonna have problems. You're gonna have problems for 13 years, 14 years, 15 years, whatever, however long the dog lives. Get the dog trained. Use common sense. If you can't be in that room, and keep an eye on the dog, you put it in a crate. When the puppy's coming out of the crate, you put a leash on the dog. Now, this dog is functioning much better, much, much better, and this dog's gonna be awesome. So is Gus the Labrador. Heel. Toto, sit. Toto, heel. Sit. No, sit. Good, Toto up, sit, Toto heel, sit. Notice how I'm using the leash and keeping the dog away from me. This dog is hardwired to sit on feet, lean against you. This breed in particular is really dominant. That's just how they are. So with muscle memory, we're gonna rectify all this. Let's do it one more time, Toto up, Good, that was good. Sit. No, sit. Toto, heel. No, heel. Sit. Notice how I am not letting the dog sit on me or lean against me. It's all muscle memory. Heel. And this is Gus. He just arrived yesterday. And I think that there's a, a, a mis... No, there's a misconception. No. Of what transpires when a dog comes here. The first thing I do is I start working with the dog and I start working with him yesterday. There's similarities in both dogs in that it's, it's how the owner has dealt with the dog up until this point. So I always look at something like this as an intervention. There's a reason why both dogs are here and it's, it's, it's obvious that uh, every, Gus, sit. No, sit. People make generally the same mistakes. And with puppies, people don't use leashes. They don't. When you have a puppy, you should have a leash on the dog coming out of the crate all the time. Until they're ready to go off leash, it's coming out of the crate, you put a leash on the dog. You don't let it wander around the house and you certainly can't get any training done without a leash. In both cases, I saw the owners doing this with the puppies in videos where the dogs that's why they come here and they're terrible on a leash. So the first thing I start doing is just walking the dog around like this and keeping the dog at heel. And in this dog's case, he tries to control the situation by lagging behind. Gus, here, no, here, come on here. And I get the dog, I get, I get the dog to follow me. Now I want all four feet on the ground, all four on the floor. No jumping up on me. Here, heel, come on buddy, heel. I just get the dog to follow me and then by tomorrow we'll start I'll start using the weave pulls I have the other dog the American or the Australian cattle dog doing the weave pulls already and Gus is already sort of doing whoa so I start getting the dog to go up on targets and he didn't want to go up on this let's see if he gives me a refusal this time but yesterday is you first time you try and get the dog to go up on a target they don't want to do it so that's another thing I was doing yesterday, was I brought the dog over here, 
and he really hesitated to go up. No, Gus, here, come on, buddy, up. He didn't want to go on this. But we need this. We need him to be able to do this to train him. Here. The other thing that I, I started with him yesterday, and, and the, Gus, sit. Good boy, that's good, good boy. Is get him to go up on the railroad tie because I'm gonna start training both dogs to do whoa. A Toto was just like Gus. She did not want to go on the railroad tie. Up, no, up, what, no, no, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Here, heel. Good. Good girl. Do it one more time. Total up. Whoa. No sniffing. Whoa. Whoa. If they're sniffing, they're not paying attention. Don't let the dog sniff the ground. Sniff the railroad tie. Whoa. No. Whoa. Whoa. And if they sit, they're doing it wrong. Here, heel. She's doing it great. Now let's go over to the wee pulls and see how she does on that. Now see how the dog's trying to sit on me? That is a no-no. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna fix that by just sheer muscle memory, not letting her do it. And I will correct her when she does it, but we're also gonna use the targets to help train her not to do that. Both breeds are known as being sort of dominant, especially this one. And if the dog is being dominant with you, see how she's leaning against me? No. You'd be, you'd be telling, see, she's persistent. She keeps trying to like bump into me. Sit. No, sit. Don't let the dog invade your space like that. You send in the incorrect message. The dog isn't being affectionate. It's being dominant. You, you'll just screw up the dog if you let the dog do that. The dog, you want it respectful. You want it sitting next to you. It heal. It's muscle memory. If you're telling the dog constantly that it's okay to lean against you and sit on your feet and stuff like that, you're going to have problems with your dog. Now, it would be better on a leash tomorrow and then the next day. But I had to get him to go up on this. He didn't want to go. Come on. Up. No, up. No, you got it. You got it. Put your legs up. Let's bring him back and see if we'll do it again. Come on, Gus. Come on, buddy. Here. Gus, up. No, no, come on, Gus. Come on, buddy. Gus, no, here. Come on, here. Heel. Up. Sometimes with the, with, the, with the puppy, I'll just put him on there. Here, come on, Gus. Come on, here. Come on, up. Come on, buddy, up. I don't want him leaning into, no, 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 up. Whoa, 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 it's muscle memory, remember that, muscle memory, whoa, 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 this is whoa, it means stand and don't move, whoa. No, here. Now he's going to sit down. So I brought him forward here. Let's see if we'll go up on the tie. Railroad tie a little bit better. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, Gus. Up. Yes. Whoa. No. Whoa. No. No. Whoa. 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 When they're young like this, or they do, do, here, heel, you can start putting them in the position. It's muscle memory. Muscle memory takes over and they start doing it. Let's see if we'll go up on the, on the railroad tie. One more try. Here, come on. We'll be doing this by later this afternoon, so I wanted to get this. I almost had it. Gus, here, come on, buddy. No, come on, let's go, heel. Gus, up. Up. Come on. No, up. Gus, up. No. No. Up. Whoa. No. 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 Whoa. No. No. 
Whoa. 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 Let's try one more time. Here. Come on, Gus. You can do it. Gus. Up. No, up. No, Gus. Come on, man. Up. Let's go. Come on, dude. Up. No. No. Whoa. 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 This is the first day, really. Whoa. We'll be getting up here by tomorrow, maybe this afternoon. Whoa. Here, heel. Toto, weave. Here. Weave. Here. Weave. Here. Weave. Here. Weave. Good girl! Gus, I tried putting through the weave pulls once yesterday, and it was very difficult. And that would be typical of most dogs. They don't really know what's going on. You just physically start putting them through the weave pole, sort of leading them with the leash. At first, some of them like jump out a whole lot. That's what Toto, the Australian cattle dog would do. And now she's picking it up. Him, he'll just like be resistant. I'm not going through that thing. So this would be the second time. So it's still gonna look kind of crazy, one, you can't, you can't use an e-collar for this. You're physically making the dog do it and muscle memory takes over. So this is sort of how it looks at first with the dog that really is resistant and doesn't want to do it. But I guarantee you by the time that the dog leaves, the dog will love weave pulls and he's a lab. I bet he does it real fast and is into it. I never worry about the dog's body language when I first start training them. That's nonsense. They don't know what's going on. I'm not, don't use food to train your dog. It's counterproductive. Like when I start teaching hold with these dogs, they're not into it. But I know the end result is that they'll be able to do the dummy launcher, reverse retrieves, regular retrieves, catch a frisbee, and they start catching on and they end up liking it. You certainly don't have to bring food into the equation because that the command itself ends up being positive reinforcement. A retriever, the retrieve is positive reinforcement. You don't even have to say good or good boy. Let's watch this as I put him through the weed poles. This is the second time. It's gonna be real sloppy and real difficult. Okay, watch this. Come on, Gus. Come on, Gus, you can do it. Come on, buddy. No, here. 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 Gus, weave. Here. Oh, that's good. No, weave that way. Weave. Weave. Here. Over here. Good. Weave. Good. Here. Weave. Here. No, here. Weave. No, weave. Weave. Good. Oh, here. Good. Good boy. You did it. You did it. We'll do it one more time and then that's it for today. That was good. Yesterday, picture it being a hundred times harder to get him through the, the gates. Let's do it one more time. Gus, here. That was good, brother. You'll get it. What's like that, dude? No, 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 no jump. Good, here, come here, here. Weave, here. Weave, no, weave, no, weave. Okay, now here. No, weave. Weave, here. Weave. Here. Okay, weave. Here. That's exhausting. He's he's a he's a lab. He's not he's not tiny. So that's it for today. Over um he'll be doing it real smooth like within a couple days, meaning he'll still be on a leash. Gus, over here. And he won't he won't do the weave pulls off leash until he's doing everything else off leash. Uh, the weave pulls will probably be one of the first things I do with him off leash. That's good. Good job, brother. Sit. Good boy. This is Marty. And Marty's another client. Marty's from Canada, so he's stuck because of the pandemic, which is no big deal. Because I love Marty. I'm friends with his mom. It's fine. It's fine. Marty will go back when Marty goes back. And besides, Marty was real naughty. He did some naughty things in the past. And he has been hanging around with Mar uh, Mango, my dog Mango, who has some bad habits. So we got to make sure he's not doing the naughty stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Smoking weed. He's not supposed to do that anymore. 
He's not. He's really naughty. He, he, it's Mango. It's not my fault. But he, Marty can do a lot of stuff. And we hadn't done the weave pulls in a long time. Like, we took a break. I was exhausted. Marty was exhausted. Now we're in work mode again. Marty can do the dummy launcher. We're going to get Marty to do some water retrieves. Marty's awesome. Let's see if he'll do the, the weave pulls. I imagine he'll do them pretty good. He'll. Come on, Marty. Marty, wave. Kick ass, brother. Sit. That was good. Good job, Martin. Thanks, Kane. You're a good boy. Did you see the way that she's doing it? She's starting to pick up on this. It's all muscle memory. Don't even attempt to do it the food trainer's way. It's it's ridiculous. It'd be non-productive. Let's see how she does it again. I My prediction is within... Well, we're not going to have her off leash for a while, but she'll be able to do it real good within a few more days. Here, heel. No, heel. Weave. Here. Weave. Here. Weave. Here. Weave. Here. Weave. Good girl! Sit! Now, she's not sitting right. I need her to be sitting in a, in a proper position, but we're, we're gonna tighten up all this as, as we go. This is a very smart breed. They're not e it's not an easy to train dog. They're, they're hardwired to be dominant, and we see this with her trying to lean against me and sit on my foot. We'll have her do it one more time. Heel. And this time, I'm gonna try and make sure that she doesn't try and sit on my foot. Here. Weave, here, weave, here, weave, here. Weave, here, weave, sit. Good girl, that's real good, good girl. That's awesome, that's very good. Something else that I have him going up on, he doesn't want to go up on it. The dog doesn't want to do it. It's not gonna help by say, oh, he doesn't like to do it. I think the owner said something like, be gentle. Like, I, that doesn't even compute with me because if I wasn't being sort of gentle, it would cause excitement. I need to train the dog, but I need the dog to function. So I'm just real matter of fact, this is what we're gonna do. So he's gonna go up on this milk crate and I won't leave this spot until he goes up on it. We did this yesterday. He should be able to do this. Here, Gus, up, come on, up. No, you got it, dude, come on, up. All the way, Gus, come on, up. No, get up there, dude, come on, up. There you go, good boy, sit. That's it, dude. That's it, good boy. Good boy, let's try one more time. Gus, here. No, Gus, here, come on, buddy. Here, Gus, one more time, up. No, up, sit. See how this time it was? there was less resistance? Same will be true with the uh, railroad tie. And these type of platforms we're gonna use to help train Gus to find certain positions. Gus, good job, buddy. Here. Here, heel. Originally, as a place target, I was using this circular, this pan, this frying pan, but she was being confused. So I started using this milk crate that has the young paw paw underneath it because it'll help with the orientation. Like if the dog goes up there and stands to the side, no good. But since this is rectangular, the dog figures out how its orientation is supposed to be in relationship to me. So she didn't want to go up on this at first. She wasn't used to it. Sort of like Gus with the railroad tie, but now she'll go up on it. Here, up, no, up, good, sit. So see, and this way she can't be touching me. She's going straight forward. That's what we want. Good girl. You're a good dog, Toto. Good girl, heel, 